as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker-puffed wheat and Quaker-puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one your huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Here's a taste treat you want to repeat. It's Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. These famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals are actually shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. They have a comeback for more nut-like flavor, a come-again tender crispness, and they're good for you. Yes, a delicious, nourishing treat, and so easy to serve. Make sure the big red and blue packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are on your breakfast table every morning. Nearly an hour, Joe Hubble had been running painfully through the darkness. His breath was coming in agonized gasps, and one hand was pressed tightly to his shoulder. Sometimes he stumbled and nearly fell headlong in the snow, but always he managed to pick himself up and press doggedly forward. Now his goal was in sight, a small cabin standing on the banks of a frozen creek. A few moments later, he was pounding on the door. Joe. Let me in, Aunt Liz. Quick. Oh, you've been shot. Yeah. Yeah, I stopped a bullet in the shoulder. Oh, land sake, sit down before you collapse. I'll hitch up the team right away and go into town for a doctor. Oh, no, you won't. Why not? I'm in trouble with the law. In trouble with the law? Oh, oh. Joe, what do you mean? Just what I say. The Mollies are probably looking for me right now. That's why I came here. You'll have to bandage me up yourself. A few moments later, as Liz Carter dressed her young nephew's wound, Joe told her what had happened. <laughs> It was Turk Banning that got me into oh, it. Oh, Joe, if only you hadn't started hanging around with that awful crook. I know, I know. I was a sap to ever have anything to do with him. Tell me what happened. Turk told me he was going to hold up the Aurora Mine office out on Bonanza Creek. He asked me if I wanted to go along. I, I didn't want to at first. I was afraid, but he kept at me. He started making fun of me. He said I was yellow if I didn't go along. Finally, I said, okay. Oh, that no good deadbeat. Oh. I knew he'd get you into some kind of trouble sooner or later. Turk said he'd yeah. handle the stick up. All I had to do was wait for him up on the ridge as a lookout. Oh, oh hey, go easy with that antiseptic. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Oh. I'll try not to hurt again. Well, go on with what you were telling me. Well, we only had one sled between us. Turk took that with him. I waited about 10 or 15 minutes. It was dark, and I couldn't see the mine office from where I was posted. But pretty soon, a flock of guys came charging up the hill right toward it. One of them shots, there he is, and they all start shooting at me. I, I fired back a couple of shots and started running. I just managed to get away by the skin of my teeth. Oh, good heavens, you were lucky to get away alive. Yeah. <laughs> then, oh. I guess that bandit will do for the time oh, being. Sure. Sure it will, Aunt Liz. It'll do fine. Thanks a lot. Look here, Joe. Don't you think you'd better go to the police and tell them the whole story? Go to the police? You think I'm crazy? You've been pretty wild and reckless, I know, but after all, you've never broken the law before. Maybe they'd let you off with just Don't be light. foolish. I've been this up to my neck. If the monies catch up with me, they'll throw the book at me. But, Joe, what are you going to do if someone recognizes you? I'll tell you one thing I'm going to do, and that's find out what happened to Turk Banning. If it turns out he was framing me, oh, I'll... Oh, now, now, Joe, don't go getting yourself all head up. 
Now, the best thing you can do right now is lie back and get yourself some rest. Yeah. Yeah, all right, Aunt Liz. But when I do leave here, the first man I'm going to see is Turk Banning. Meanwhile, in a back room of the Malamute Cafe, Turk Banning was discussing the mine holdup with the owner of the cafe, a man named Blackie Wyndham. Blackie had just finished stuffing the proceeds of the robbery into his safe. The money would be saved in there for the time being, Turk. <clears throat> we'll divide it up tomorrow, as soon as Dunlap gets into town. <clears throat> that sure was a smart plan you cooked up, Blackie. Did everything go off the way it was supposed to? Sure. The whole thing went off like clockwork. Dunlap turned the payroll money over to me, and I hightailed it away on my sled. What about young Joe Hubble? It worked out just like you planned. While I was making my getaway in one direction... Dunlap led the mine crew up the ridge in the opposite direction. Right up to where the kid was hiding out. <laughs> Good work, Turk. <laughs> Good work. When Sergeant Preston arrived at the Aurora Mine Office that same evening, he heard the story of the holdup from the lips of Ernie Dunlap, the mine foreman. Well, Sergeant, it was like this. I was sitting in the office going over the books. The men were all over at the bunkhouse eating supper. Don't you eat with the mine hands? Well, usually I do, but tonight I just happen to be working late. Oh, Anyway, I was sitting here in the office when all of a sudden this fella burst in with a gun in his hand. What'd he look like? Well, he's just a young fella, not more than 20 or 21, I guess. About medium height, not fat, not thin. His pocket hood was up, but I think he was fair-haired. All right, go on. Well, he covered me with his gun and made me open up the safe. Then he told me to turn around. By the way we were standing, I could see his shadow on the wall. So when he raised his gun to hit me over the head... I ducked a little bit, and the blow didn't hit me too hard. Knocked you out? Yeah, but I couldn't have been out more than a few seconds, because when I came to, I got up and ran to the door, and I saw the robber just hightailing it up the ridge. Oh. How much was taken from the safe? The whole month's payroll, nearly $10,000. Strangers should arrive at such an opportune moment for a holdup. What do you mean? You probably figured that the men would be eating supper just about that time. Yes, but you told me you usually eat with them. How do you know you'd be working late in the office on this particular evening? Well, shucks, I don't know. It just happened that way. If it hadn't happened that way, I wonder how we expected to get into the safe. Now, look, Sergeant. You're not insinuating that I was in cahoots with that hold-up man? I'm not insinuating anything. I'm just pointing out the facts. Any charges I have to make will be made later... Come on, King. We'll go up the ridge and see if we can pick up a trail. Yukon King soon picked up Joe Hubble's scent and started off eagerly in pursuit of the fugitive. Half an hour later, Sergeant Preston halted his team in front of Liz Carter's camp. Okay. Hiya. What is it, King? Find something? Oh. Blood on the snow. King, I have a hunch the man we were after is young Joe Hubble. Must have been wounded during his getaway, so he made a beeline ahead of his aunt's cabin. Well, it's too bad for Liz's sake. We'll have to arrest him just the same. Sergeant Preston. Hello, Liz. I guess you know why I'm here. Uh, what do you want? The Aurora Mine Office was held up tonight. King picked up the scent of the holdup man and trailed him here to your cabin. But Sergeant, no one came here tonight. King doesn't seem to believe you. I'm afraid I don't either. But it's the truth, Sergeant. Sorry, Liz. I'll have to see for myself. Come on, King. The interior of the cabin was divided into two rooms by a rough plank partition. King headed straight toward the door leading into the back room, and the sergeant followed. But suddenly, the Mountie whirled as the front door opened. Get your hands up, Sergeant. <laughs> Don't let that dog make any false moves. I suppose you slipped out the back way and circled around to the front. That it? Yeah, that's right. Sergeant, I'm sorry. It's true, I was hiding him, but I didn't know he planned to do this. Joe, if you're smart, you'll put down that gun and give yourself up. Sergeant, right, Joe. Please do what he says. And go to jail? No thanks. It's only your first offense, Joe. If you resist arrest, you'll be making it worse. I suppose you think I'm the one who held up the mine office. Well, aren't you? Of course I'm not. I was in on a job, I admit that. But it was Turk Banning who pulled the hold up. No use trying to throw the blame on someone else, Joe. Your story won't hold water. I knew you wouldn't believe me, Sergeant. But it was Turk just the same. Turk doesn't fit the description. According to the mine foreman, the man who held him up was a young fellow, about 20 uh, or 21 years old. 
What's that? He said the robber was a medium height and probably fair-haired. In other words, just like you. Uh, he's lying. That dirty rat. I suspected Turk was trying to frame me, and now I know for sure. What are you talking about? Turk posted me up on the ridge as a lookout, and then he left me there holding a the bag so as I'd be caught. He and that mine foreman must be in cahoots. Well, if you're telling me the truth, put down that gun, and I'll see the Turk and the foreman are brought to justice. Don't make me laugh, Sergeant. If I surrender to you, the foreman will swear I was the guy who pulled the holdup. He and Turk will get away with the dough, and I'll take the rap. Joe, what are you going to do? First, I'm going to take the sergeant's gun, and then handcuff him so he can't follow me. Then I'm going after Turk and settle this business in my own way. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Supposing we were to go into the old-time general store in Dawson, the store where gold prospectors get their supplies... I'll bet the sleepy old-timer who runs this store would really perk up his ears if we told him about Quaker-popped wheat and Quaker-popped rice being shot from guns. Hey, who? What? What varmint shooting up my store? <laughs> well, the only thing I know of that's been shot are the cereals shot from guns. Cereals? Yep, Quaker-popped wheat and Quaker-popped rice. The swellest tasting, ready-to-serve breakfast cereals from here to Whitehorse. But them guns... Why, they're the guns that are loaded with choice, sun-ripened, premium grains of rice or wheat. And then these guns are exploded. <laughs> Out come big, giant grains, eight times normal size. They're magnified, crispified. Shot through and through with bang-up, nut-like flavor, too. That's why Quaker-popped rice and Quaker-popped wheat are so good to eat. Say, I reckon I'd have me a gold mine right in this store if I could sell rice or wheat shot from guns. You sure would. Folks like it for breakfast, lunch, or supper. All you do is pour out a bowl full right from the package. No cooking. Just add milk or cream and top with your favorite fruit. Mighty inviting, I calls it. Mighty nourishing, too. Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice furnish added health values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Well, how can I get me a sack of them? Oh, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice are never sold in bags or bulk. And that's something for you fellas and girls to remember, too. Tell your mom to please look for the red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Then she'll be sure to get the original crisp, fresh, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice. Now to continue. Sergeant Preston had trailed Joe Hubble to his aunt's cabin, but Joe had taken the sergeant by surprise and was covering him with a gun. When the young fugitive realized that he had been framed by Turk Banning and the mine foreman, he vowed to go after Turk and settle matters in his own way. Use your head, Joe. If you leave here looking for trouble, you'll wind up in a worse jam than ever. That's my lookout, not yours. What do you expect to do after you've found Turk? I'm going to make him confess that he and the mine foreman are framing me, that's what. And help yourself to the stolen payroll money, I suppose. Don't worry, Sergeant. I don't want any part of that dough. Now turn around and keep your hands up high. Sorry, Joe, but I'm not going to do it. I said keep your hands up. Either you hand over that gun or I'm going to take it away from you. You crazy? No, and I don't think you Stay are. back, Preston, or this gun will go off. Steady, King. I'm warning you, Preston. You come one step closer and I'll pull the trigger. Go ahead. If you've got the nerve. For the last time, don't come any closer. Joe, for heaven's sake, don't shoot. Don't worry, Liz. He's no killer. Sergeant, I... What's the use? Hand it over, Joe. All right. Take it. Oh, thank heavens. You see, Sergeant Joe's not really bad. He never would have gotten mixed up in a crime if it hadn't been for Turk Banning. I'm inclined to agree, Liz. And now that he's learned his lesson, couldn't you give him another chance? Why, I'm afraid the only person who can do that's the judge. Joe will have to stand trial. I told you it was hopeless, Aunt Liz. I didn't say that, Joe. Tell me, how'd you expect to make Turk confess that he and the foreman framed you? With a gun, naturally. What other way is there? Confession signed under duress isn't worth the paper it's written on. Sergeant, isn't there any way you can get the goods on those crooks? Yes, there's one sure way, Liz. That is, to find the stolen money in their possession. Well, they've probably got it hidden away somewhere. Perhaps we can get Turk to lead us to it. 
Joe's willing to help me. Oh, sure, I'm willing, Sergeant. But what do you want me to do? I want you to go to Turk. Sergeant say, Preston explained his plan. And when he was through, Joe Hubble eagerly agreed to cooperate. You bet I'll help you, Sergeant. It sounds like a cinch. Don't be too sure. However, if the plan does work and we're able to recover the stolen money, I'm pretty sure the judge will be lenient with oh, you. I'm praying that plan of yours works out, Sergeant. Sergeant Preston and Joe Hubble left Liz's cabin and headed back to Dawson, with Joe riding the sergeant's sled. When they arrived in town, they halted a short distance from Blackie Wyndham's cafe, which they knew was Turk's favorite hangout. Joe went over and peered through the window of the cafe, then came back and reported to Sergeant Preston. Yeah, he's in there all right, Sergeant. I can see him through the window. Good. I'll wait here in the shadows while you go in and talk to him. When the two of you come out, I'll trail you at a safe distance. Okay. Turk Banning was seated at a table playing cards with several other men. He looked up and grinned contemptuously as he saw Joe Hubble making his way toward him through the crowded cafe. Well, well, well. It ain't my young friend Joe Hubble. I want to talk to you, Turk. Yeah, what about? You know what about. Him got the faintest idea. If you got something to say to me, go ahead and say it. Don't be funny. If you know what's good for you, you'll go someplace where we can talk. All right. Cut me out of the next deal, you guys. I'll be back in a few minutes as I find out what's eating a kid. Come on, Hubble. Blackie Wyndham was standing behind the bar. He watched narrowly as Turk and Joe Hubble walked over and sat down at an isolated table in the corner of the room. All right, Hubble. What's on your mind? I've come for my share of that payroll money. What? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. You dirty poor cat. You only let me in on that job tonight so you could use me as the fall guy. That's right, I did. And what are you going to do about I'll it? I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it. Either you cough up or I'm going to the police and tell them the whole story. <laughs> hey, listen, sonny. I got news for you. Dunlap, the mine foreman, is in on the whole scheme. He's already told the police that the guy who held him up was a young fella. Someone just like you. If you try squawking to the Monies, he'll identify you as a hold-up man. So that's it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty smart idea, wasn't it? But not quite smart enough. Yeah, what do you mean? Suppose I go to the Monies and say, sure, I held up the Aurora Mine office. And what's more, a guy named Turk Banning helped me pull the job. What's that? You heard me. Tell him you were waiting for me up on the ridge as a lookout. After I got away with the money, you knocked me down and grabbed all the dough for yourself. Why, you scheming oh, little rat? Don't I try don't... anything, Turk. I got a gun inside my pocket, and it's pointing right at you. You wouldn't dare go to the mountains with that story. We'd both wind up with a good long prison stretch. Oh, wouldn't I? Listen, Turk, I'm going to count up to ten. At the end of that time, either you start coughing up, or I'm going straight to Monty headquarters. Now, which is it? One, two, three. Now, wait a minute, Joe. You've, you've got to give me time to think this over. In the first place, I ain't got the money. I didn't think you'd have it with you. Get your park and we'll get it. Right now. Now, simmer down for Pete's sake. I told you I ain't got the money. Then who has? Blackie Wyndham. Blackie Wyndham? Yeah. He's the guy who planned the whole deal. He's got the money here in the safe. All right, Turk. If Blackie's got the money, then get him over here. Prano. Hey, Blackie. Yeah, what do you want? Come on over here a second. Oh, what's up? The kid here says he wants his share of that payroll money. He says if we don't kick through, he's going to go to the Mounties and spill the beans. You tell him what'll happen if he tries it? Yeah, and it don't seem to faze him a bit. He says he'll admit he pulled the hole up and claim I helped him out on a job. That's right, Blackie, I will. And don't go trying any strong arm stuff, because I got a gun right here in my pocket. Well, in that case, I guess we'd better give you what's coming to you. Now, come on, my safe's in the back room. All right. You come along, too, Turk, so I can keep my eye on you. Yeah, yeah. As the two men rose from the table, Joe didn't notice the way Blackie caught the eye of the cafe bouncer, a hulking ex prize fighter known as Moose. Right through this doorway, gents. You two go first. Uh, anything you say. Joe closed the door behind them and at the same time pulled the gun out of his pocket. All right, Blackie. Start opening the safe. Why, sure. Joe was standing with his back to the door as Wyndham bent down and began twirling the dial of the safe. Suddenly, the door of the room was jerked open. Oh! 
Moose. Moose's huge fist caught Joe a stunning blow in the back of the head. As Joe crumpled, Moose spun him around and finished him off with an uppercut to the jaw. Good work, Moose. Uh, I saw you give me the eye just before you came back here. He was trying to hold us up. Ah, oh, that dirty skunk. Hey, you, you want me to call the Mounties, boy? No, 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 don't bother. I, I don't want the Mounties messing around here any more than necessary. It's uh, bad for business. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Turk and me will take care of him. You go on back out in the cafe and keep an eye on things. Okay, boss. If you need me again, just call it. What are we going to do with him, Blackie? There's a sled and a dog team out back. We'll take him out to Bonanza Creek. You mean out near the mine? That's right. We'll put a bullet in him, plant his body somewhere up on the ridge, on the side away from the mine. <laughs> if anybody finds him, it'll look like he stopped lead while he was making his getaway. <laughs> Blackie, you're a mighty smart man. With growing uneasiness, Sergeant Preston waited for Joe Hubble to emerge from the cafe. As the minutes ticked by, the Mountie began to feel more and more certain that something had gone wrong. King, I have a hunch that Joe's running into trouble. If the plan worked, he and Turk should have come out of the cafe by this time. Maybe we'd better investigate. The sergeant paused for a moment outside the cafe and looked in through the window, but he couldn't see either Joe or Turk. So he opened the door and went inside. <coughs> he was greeted by Moose, the bouncer. Are you looking for someone, Sergeant? Yes, I'm looking for a young fellow named Joe Hubble. I don't think I know the guy. Who is he? Never mind. You know Turk Banning. What happened to him? Well, he's in the back room, I guess, talking to Blackie Wyndham, you Want me to go see? No, thanks. I'll see for myself. Hey, 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 wait a minute, Sergeant. You ain't supposed to go back there. Eh? Who's going to stop me? Moose tagged along behind, a worried frown on his battered features, as the sergeant strode to the rear of the cafe and entered the back room. The room was empty. All right, Moose, you better start talking. What happened to Turk and Joe Hubble? Shucks, I wasn't supposed to tell you all this, but I guess maybe I better... A uh, young guy was in here about 20 minutes ago. He pulled a gun off. Moose told the sergeant of the scene that had taken place in the back room a short time before and how he himself had knocked out the young man who was holding a gun on Turk and Blackie. What'd they do with him after you knocked him out? Uh, such me. Blackie told me to go on back out in the cafe. He said he and Turk would take care of the young guy. They must have taken him out the back way. King, we've got to find Joe Hubble. <laughs> That's right, boy. Find Joe Hubble. Before leaving the cafe, Turk and Blackie had tied and gagged their prisoner for fear he might recover consciousness during the trip to Bonanza Creek. When they arrived at their destination, they drove their team into the shelter of a thick clump of trees and underbrush. Then they untied Joe Hubble and began carrying him up the ridge. When they had nearly reached the top, Blackie Wyndham said, Right about here's a good spot. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to plug him, or do you want me to do it? Doesn't make any difference. I may as well do it. What's going on? Hey, he's starting to come, too. <laughs> Just in time to watch me pull the trigger. Hey, wait. Someone's coming. You're right. wonder who's traveling this time of night. The darkness and the thickly clustering trees prevented the two crooks from seeing all the way to the foot of the ridge. They listened intently and heard the team stopping at a point almost directly below them. Yeah, I don't like that, Blackie. What do you suppose it is? I don't know. Meanwhile, Joe Hubble had recovered consciousness and was trying to get his where, bearings. Where am I? Pipe down, Hubble. Oh. You make any noise right now, and this gun will go off wrecking your Boy. face. Hey, Blackie, whoever he is, he's coming up the slope right toward us. I can hear him. Go on down there at that big clump of underbrush. Get your gun all ready for him. If it looks like trouble, shoot first and ask questions later. In the meantime, I'll stay here and keep my gun on Hubble. Okay. Turk crept quietly down the slope and took up his position. A hundred yards below him, Sergeant Preston and King were advancing upward through the darkness. Several minutes went by, tense moments of waiting. Finally, Blackie's attention wavered from his prisoner. His head turned slightly as he glanced down the slope. Joe Hubble saw his chance. I'll take that gun, boy. Oh, no, you won't. As the two men grappled with each other, the gun went off accidentally. At the sound of the shot, Preston flung himself flat on the ground. Almost at the same moment, Turk fired at the Mountie. The bullet passed over the sergeant's head. He fired back at the flash. Oh, Turk clutched at his shoulder and fell forward through the underbrush. Before he could struggle to his feet, Preston shouted to King. Watch him, boy. Don't let him move. 
As King raced forward to stand guard over the fallen gunman, Sergeant Preston charged up the slope toward the point where Blackie Wyndham and Joe Hubble were fighting. At that moment, Blackie landed a smashing left on Joe Hubble's jaw. Up that gun, Blackie. Hey, what the... Joe went sprawling over backward, and Blackie whirled to deal with the sergeant. He raised his gun to shoot. But before he could pull the trigger, the sergeant fired. Oh, my arm! Don't move, Blackie, or next time I'll shoot to kill. You and your partner are under arrest in the name of the Queen. A short time later, the two crooks stood by sullenly, handcuffed together as Joe told the sergeant what he had learned at the cafe before he was knocked unconscious. According to Turk, Black, he wouldn't have planned the whole business. He's got the payroll money in his safe back at the cafe. That's all the evidence we'll need to convict them of the mine robbery. And on top of that, they'll be facing a charge of attempted murder. Well, what about Dunlap, the mine foreman, Sergeant? I'll arrest him before we start back to Dawson. A stand trial along with Turk and Blackie, and it's a safe bet that any jury will find him guilty, too. Sergeant... Do you really think that judge will let me off with a suspended sentence? Why, yes, Joe. I feel sure they'll put you on probation. You've realized your mistake, you've helped locate the stolen money, and you've helped me catch the real criminals. You've earned a second chance, and I'm going to see to it that you get it. Yes, King, this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. At breakfast time, if you feel like this, oh, hum, same old thing to eat, then do this. Rush over to the grocer's and rush back with a package of delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Then pour out a heaping bowl full Top it with milk or cream and fruit and take a big spoonful. Ah, what tender Christmas. What delicious nut-like flavor. Yes, a real appetite waker-upper. So get out of a breakfast rut. Serve yourself a tempting, delicious, nourishing treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Look for the big red and blue packages with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Remember... Quaker puffed rice and wheat are never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of Wolf Creek. King and I were investigating the murder of a mail sled driver, and our quest led us to Wolf Creek. But the manhunt turned into a wolf hunt for King and a death trap for me. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure... Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.